Hey, Fu, I must ask you a question. I've got this unwanted hair on my upper lip. Uh, do you know anything I could do for that? Uh, yeah. Do you remember our former lab assistant and former Shu Fu follicle regeneration program client, Bromeo Smith? Oh, yeah. Well, it turns out he missed his bald head after using mm. Brogaine. And uh, thanks to our new Shu Fu follicle anti-regeneration electrolysis program, No Brogaine, mm. he's as bald as ever. Uh, you think it'll work for me? I mean, it's worth a shot. Okay. That's right. Today we're talking about electrolytic cells. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break hey. this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Chem and Atcha. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, in the last video we talked about batteries, AKA, Voltaic cells. Yeah, and today we're gonna to talk about the other electrochemical cells, electrolytic cells. So let's get started. Electrolytic cells, a lesson from the redox unit. Spontaneous versus non-spontaneous reactions. A more active solid metal will react with a solution of a less active metal ion. We use table J. The more active metal is oxidized, breaks down, and the less active metal ion is reduced, it builds up. This reaction is spontaneous and the buildup is observable. If we take a look at our pictures, we see zinc is placed in a solution of copper plus two ions on the left, and on the right, a reaction has occurred. We see that this reaction is spontaneous. This works because zinc is the more active metal compared to copper when looking at table J. So zinc is oxidized and it breaks down and copper plus two ion being less active is reduced and builds up. A less active solid metal will not react in a solution of a more active metal ion. The less active metal cannot be oxidized and the more active metal ion cannot be reduced. This reaction is non-spontaneous and no change is observed. So we've been consistent using zinc and copper as examples this entire unit. And in the last slide, you saw how zinc metal will spontaneously react with copper plus two ions. In this case, we have reversed that. We have copper metal and we have zinc plus two ions. So if it's spontaneous in one direction, we would expect it to be non-spontaneous in the other. So in this example, we have copper metal placed in those zinc ions and nothing is happening. There's no reaction because copper is lower on table J. All right, we're gonna look at a little animation here of different metals reacting with different metal ion solutions. Um, we've got magnesium, copper, zinc, and silver, and we have their corresponding ion solutions. We're gonna start with a metal that's pretty low on table J. We already know that copper is pretty low, so we're gonna take some copper metal, and we're going to dunk it into all four of these samples of the ion solutions. Now, some will react, some will not. You can kind of see those changes already, but if we remove them, you'll notice the copper did not change in the ion solutions of magnesium or zinc. And that's because copper is lower on table J. It's less active than zinc or magnesium. Copper will also not react with copper ions. It will not react with itself. Um, the final solution though, silver, it did react. We see a reaction here. Now silver on table J, that is below copper. So we would expect that copper would react with the silver ions. If we use magnesium, now magnesium is higher up on table J. So we're gonna see what happens in this situation. And we see some reactions. As we remove them, you'll see that magnesium, though it's very active and very high on table J, it does not react with itself. However, it is higher than the rest of these. So as it's higher than zinc, it will react with zinc ions and we'll do the same thing with copper and silver ions. You try number one. Answer the following question, justify your answer below, and please be sure that you use table J. Okay, we're finally ready to introduce electrolytic cells. A non-spontaneous reaction can still be forced to occur. In an electrolytic cell, a non-spontaneous reaction occurs and electricity is required to power it. Electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. Electroplating uses electrolytic cells. 
Notice in the image, we have a silver looking penny. That's because this is electroplated with zinc. The setup for electrolytic cells. You generally see one reaction container instead of two half cells. Thus, no salt bridge is needed, although an electrolyte is present. A battery or other power source is required for the reaction to occur. Electrons still move from anode to cathode, but the anode is positive and the cathode is negative. All right, we have a couple of diagrams that we're going to compare and contrast the two different types of electrochemical cells. Um, we have a galvanic cell, which is a voltaic cell. In a voltaic cell, energy released by a spontaneous redox reaction is converted into electrical energy. And that electrical energy that we're producing here is used to power the light bulb you see in the diagram. Now, normally in a voltaic cell, you'll see that standard U-tube shaped uh, salt bridge. In this case, we have what's called a semi-permeable membrane, which all that does, it allows for the flow of ions through it. And if you recall, that is the function of the salt bridge. So we still have two cells here. They're separated by that dashed line. Now in an electrolytic cell, electrical energy is used to drive a non-spontaneous redox reaction. Now you can see that we're using energy here because it's plugged in to the power source, to the wall. Now an electrolytic cell requires this energy to drive this non-spontaneous reaction, and it's also all in one container. Electroplating. The anode is the metal you are plating with, and the cathode is the object you are plating. The anode breaks down into metal ions, which travel to the cathode and build up as a solid. Note, the oxidation and reduction half reactions are exact opposites of one another. For example, silver plating a spoon. Let's take a look at our diagram. We have our silver anode to the left. The silver anode is where oxidation occurs and silver solid, Ag0, is breaking down into silver ions, Ag+, as electrons are lost. Now, those same silver ions that are produced at the anode move over to the cathode, the cathode being the spoon or whatever it is we're plating, and those silver ions actually are reduced at the spoon and they go from ions to solid atoms. So the same element is involved at the anode and the cathode. So if we were to write half reactions for oxidation at the anode, we'd have Ag0 going to Ag+, plus, giving off one electron, so it's breaking down, and then reduction occurring at the cathode, we'd have those same silver ions being reduced to Ag0 as a solid. All right, in this animation, we have an electrolytic cell that is set up for electroplating. Now, in this example, we have chosen nickel, um, and we are going to plate copper with that nickel. Now, nickel is hooked up to my anode here. This is where oxidation is going to occur. This is where losing electrons will occur. We're going to form some nickel ions. And on the copper side, we're actually going to form some nickel atoms from ions. Now, that's reduction, so that means that this is the cathode because that's where reduction occurs. All right, so this is an electrolytic cell because it requires a power source. You can see we're hooked up to a power source here. We got a voltage, we got amps. Our timer is set, so if we can turn it on, we can see what's going on here with the nickel, where we are going from nickel atoms, we're losing some electrons going up the wire, and the nickel ions are going into solution, and they're migrating over here to the copper side, and you can see they're kind of capturing those electrons and becoming uh, reduced and becoming nickel atoms. And we can see that the mass of this electrode, of this cathode, is increasing as nickel is being reduced onto it, and we can see the mass of the anode is actually going down because those nickel atoms are becoming ions and going into solution. All right, let's take a look at electroplating. I want to electroplate a penny, a shiny, shiny copper penny with zinc. So in an electrolytic cell, I need to have a power source. So I've got my battery here. I've connected my anode. My anode is zinc. This zinc is gonna be used to replenish the zinc ions that are already found in the solution in the beaker. All I've gotta do is connect my penny. The penny is gonna be the cathode. Whatever we're plating is always the cathode. And I'm gonna put in the solution and hopefully zinc plate it. So as you can see, we've zinc plated the copper penny. 
electrolysis. Molten ionic compounds can be decomposed into their elements by electrolysis. The electrodes used are non-reactive like graphite or platinum. The word molten means melted. So when we say molten ionic compounds, we mean that we've added energy and broke apart the crystal lattice to create freely moving ions. In our picture, we have molten NaCl. So it's not aqueous, there's no water, but the ions are free to move. Now in an electrolysis setup, we generally have electrodes that don't directly participate in the reaction. They just help with the movement of electrons. We have Na plus being reduced at the cathode to Na zero, which is a solid metal, so we get Na metal at the end of this. And also, we have Cl minus being oxidized at the anode, and it's forming its elemental form of Cl2 gas. That's why we observe bubbles. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna demonstrate electrolysis for you. So in our notes, we had molten NaCl, and those ions were being transformed into their atoms. Um, in this case, we have aqueous copper two chloride, and we are going to use um, a power source. In this case, we have our battery right here. It is hooked up to a couple of electrodes. These electrodes are made of graphite. They are not going to participate in the reaction. Um, and in the well plate, we have our copper two chloride solution. So in there, we have some floating ions. So we are going to introduce our electrodes to the solution. And on the red electrode here, you can see some bubbles forming. And I am starting to get the distinct odor of chlorine, or it smells like bleach. And on the black electrode, you can see there is a brown coating on my electrode. Now that brown coating is the copper. So in solution, I have copper ions. Copper plus two ions are becoming copper atoms. So they end up looking brown, very much like a penny. And on my other electrode, I saw the bubbles. So I have chloride ions becoming chlorine atoms and escaping as bubbles of chlorine gas. Water can also be broken down by electrolysis. We're gonna demonstrate the electrolysis of water using what is called the Hoffman apparatus. In the Hoffman apparatus, we add water, an electrolyte to help with the conductivity, and also some yellow food coloring to help with the color contrast. When we connect the Hoffman apparatus to a power source, in this case, a set of batteries, we notice that bubbling occurs. Two non-reactive platinum electrodes are used for the electrolysis of water. Water is decomposed into its constituent elements, hydrogen and oxygen. These are both gases, which is why we see bubbling. Notice that the bubbling on the left is more rapid than the bubbling on the right. The bubbling on the left represents hydrogen, whereas the bubbling on the right represents oxygen. If we look at the balance equation, we can see that we get two moles of hydrogen produced for every one mole of oxygen produced. This is why we see the more rapid bubbling occurring on the left. Notice that the amount of hydrogen gas collected on the left is double that of the oxygen collected on the right. You try number two. Answer the following questions using the cell shown at the top. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode on electrolytic cells. Later, nerds. Promotional consideration by Exhaust Text by Carnivations, car to car text communication system. Editor's Choice from Road Rage Daily. Don't take it from me, take it from Ethel from Cheek to Waga. You should have seen the look on those gangbangers when I flashed WTF. But we never off, but we zone to the brick of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.